Hello everyone, welcome to the Elephant Robotics channel. Today, we are honored to have Jia Jiyang, Shu Yanghu, Jia Yingbai from Electrical Robotics Center of Cardiff Metropolitan University. In this video, we will talk about the experience for using semi humanoid DOM robot, my body, in their research and teaching. Just keep watching. Could you introduce yourself and talk about Electrical Robotics Center? My name is Shu Yanghu. I work with David. So I'm from Cardiff Metropolitan University. This is my first year in my PhD. I'm social tutor and also research assistant. So uh, Eureka Robotic Center, I think, is uh, from 2017 uh, was established, and for now is in, in UK is the top 11, the most good robot instructor uh, professional uh, center in the UK. And uh, my research is mainly to do is uh, healthcare and uh, the elderly care, and also the uh, relevant the policy and standard make, making. My name is Jia Yin. Now I'm a postgraduation course student in Cardiff Might. Now I'm a research internship in Eureka Robotics Laboratory. I majored in MSc Robotics and AI. I have got touched with AI and the practice of robotics and how to use robots to do some works. In my research, I have used elephant robotics, the type of my body. Could you introduce your major research on main educational applications with elephant robotics robots? My own is actually to get the opportunity to share my experience here. And actually in my class, I use this actually the robotics teaching about the autonomous system in my class. So in that class, actually, it, there are some like knowledge about the kinematic uh, analysis. It's like uh, we need to teach the students. So usually we will give them some like uh, ask them to do the demonstration using a robot arm. But normally it's very uh, simple structure for the robot arm. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's not hard uh, enough actually to show them, to ask them understand very well for the uh, robot arm moving or uh, complicated kinematic analysis because it's based on the two dimension uh, demo, it's like 2D space. So uh, the students are very eager to know how the robot arm or the kinematic things moving in the 3D space. So the elephant actually, the robot is quite useful to explain about that kind of things. For example, especially during a teaching them, it's like um, how to calculate about the degree of freedom for the robot arm and how many like actuators they can directly use and control a robot arm to move so they can just very quickly to understand through the uh, elephant robot. And what the difficulty between the uh, single arm and the door arm robot because my research is about the uh, human knowledge robot. Uh, maybe the fundamental knowledge about the single arm is just a part of the human knowledge robot's knowledge. So I will use that door robot actually to explain to them if we want to develop actually from a single arm to the uh, human knowledge robot, what will happen if we control about the one single robot arm, maybe there is no any like a limitation for the control. Uh, we just need to know there are some like base we cannot reach is because the three hole for the two arms movement. But if we uh, generate to the two arm, it will be the different. So it will have the conflict with that two arm. If we want to ask this actually the human or robot to finish some task, so they need to think about what kind of like a uh, conflict with another arm. So this is actually the difference, and uh, it's quite good actually for the experience for the students' feedback actually. So I use this way actually to actually show the demo, and they can quick understand what about happen. It's it's more uh, clearly compared with. I explain using the work. At this moment, it's just because I am do the pilot for the uh, teaching test. So I'm not actually totally to use the elephant robot in my class. Uh, my right. class actually focus on the undergraduate at this moment because I only get one device for the door robot arm. It's just a uh, start test actually in my class. So some class, uh, some workshop, I just bring that elephant robot to explain to them, but it's not used them actually directly, directly in my class. So I can go more elephant robot in the class because um, I can just directly use that one to ask the student practice in my workshop. So I think that's better. For me, I think uh, the main thing to do is deploy it in the hospital and uh, in nursing house to help assist. I hope the, the robot can replace the old lady's hand so make their life easier and also assist the medical work, healthcare staff can reduce their the work pressure. So that's 
what I want for use the robotic arms. And for now, I think definitely I want to use a multiple uh, robotic arm, but for now I just use a single arm because it's easily to collect the, the old list data because I'm not uh, mainly to do use the, the robot to optimize uh, the research. But I think uh, the multiple arms is more perfect for my research. In my research, I mainly experience how to use the humanoid robots, my body, to understand the robotics and the mobility and autonomous mainly use them to have a research of how to use them to interact with students or, cl or classmates to get interested of robots and how to use them in an exactly scenario. About mobility, first time I mainly get touch my blogly. As for my undergraduation course, it's mainly used with Java. And for this, I get to learn about more about Python to operate it. At first time, I use my blogly to get more understanding of Python because there are some modules that can show the Python codes through my blogly. Then I began to program with Python by myself and use a Python file to run the program to let the robots move. And then I begin to have an explosion of the ROS and the ROS second. I first time touch with ROS and it has some case that can help me to learn about it. That's what I learned for my body. And through this three main module, I blockly Python programming and ROS. And I begin to learn to more knowledge of autonomous of robotics and how to use the ROS to complete more detailed and complex actions for robots. Could you share the advantages of the dual arm robot in educational application? First, the robot is a humanoid one. It has head, interact screen, and two arms, and each arm with six joints that we can see the mobility very clearly. Then for my display to my classmates, they may have a more detailed scene about how the robots move uh, compared with some big robots. And I think this is the advantage of my body. Then for the interaction, I think it's better than some other robots. And uh, we can have a try just with the screen and to touch it and use drag teach to have a better understanding of the mobility of joints and to have better operation for it. Among the widely used simulation platforms, which one is frequently utilized in your research, such as ROS, Gazebo, and Musical? I think I'm not very actually to use this kind of tools, but uh, Python actually is the most useful because I my research focus on how to create about the artificial intelligence and uh, integrate them to the robot. Uh, so I usually use the tools about the Python uh, and also the ROS because uh, I can create actually the nodes and use the ROS to control about the robot uh, with the different actually the devices. Uh, so these two tools actually is the most useful and common happen in my research and also in my class. As many students may the first time to get touched with robots, I mainly use my Blockly and the Python program to get understand of the mobility of robots, then get to use the ROS system to know how to use Linux system and the ROS to have an operation of robotics. That's mainly what I research about. And I try to use them to have a better explaining to my classmates and to show my work through the humanoid robotics, especially the two arms of my body. Now, I mainly use the ROS and the Gazembo. They are very basic simulation that we, that we used in our module about robotics mobility. And they are also what I mainly use. And for my research, use the ROS is more and to use Gazembo to make more simulations for it if we don't have the robots. And we can also use it through uh, our own PC to have a display of it. And for the, for the real robots, you can also have a visit. Next question is, during your past experience, do you encounter any challenges while using different properties in my body? I think the most uh, difficulty actually is about the uh, document theory. Uh, some like a fundamental knowledge I still need to explain to them so they cannot directly like have a very uh, quick understand and control but mm -hmm. especially for the ROS system so they need to have a very uh, basic knowledge about the ROS firstly and then they can just understand the whole things content is in the, the, the document you, you provide. But I think it's, it, it's good enough actually for the student actually to control the robot with the different languages or something. But uh, I, I need to explain them actually for the Python SDK, what the SDK is, what the ROS is, and how we can control about the robot. Well, I think most challenges, uh, two ways. The first one is you must be have some of the coding experience. So only the, the programmer or have the coding experience can use via the advanced ro uh, robotics. So uh, for my research, I think it's for training to let the, the medical staff or older people use maybe. So that's, I think, better once they know how to code or how to optimize the, the robots. Mm. I have some programming basis, but not with the Python or ROS. He introduced it is a good chance to get to use it through my body because it has a better interaction. And, we, and I can get quick knowing about it. Then I like two-armed because it seems much cuter than some big robots. And there is also a Linux system for it that I can get more, more knowing about it. So I choose my body as my research and I decided to input machine learning or deep learning into it to, have, to let it become more intelligent.
which type of robots are primarily used in the UK Robotics Institute? I think for different type of robotics, because uh, different robotics center, many different area. Mm -hmm. For example, like uh, Oxford University, uh, they manage to do is the software robotics, doing some like robotic talks, and also they have the robotic single robotic arm. I think the robot single robotic arm is uh, every uh, robotic center must. Uh, have one. I think that's the only way you can qualify the, you are the robotic center because you, you must be doing some research about the robotic arms. So this, this is top 11 robotic center in UK. So as we can see, uh, we are the third one. So yeah. we are focusing on the social and service robots. But uh, different robotic centers, they could have different parts. Most of them I visit, uh, they all have single robotic arm, but uh, less to see the multiple robotic arm in the center of robotics lab. That's very important if uh, the robotic arm for education or for doing some research. Because we have a, a panda arm, the Oxford Robotics Institute, uh, the year before last year we visited, there are many to do is the autonomous system and also uh, AI uh, and uh, we saw uh, the software robotics. Uh, and uh, the Oxford Robotics Institute also had one, cost mm -hmm. 40k around uh, pounds for, for the robotic arm. I think that's not suitable mm -hmm. for the education, that's suitable for the research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so even for the researchers, sometimes we are afraid to let the robotics arm broken, but uh, very high cost for the robotics arm. So yeah. we, hopefully we ha can have some like a uh, more available one or, or uh, you know, for, for the student one. Also, mm -hmm. uh, we have some project for, for the local students, you know, uh, doing some AI education for integrate mm -hmm. their thinking. Yes, so uh, we have a continued project, maybe five or 10 years. So to have a lot of connection with their primary school and high school and let the students uh, have some like uh, to, to talking about what the robot is and how to programming. I think it's also very good for what telling them or teaching them how to coding or how to touch the AI and uh, doing this kind of fun. Is there any ongoing projects or would you opening any new projects in the coming years that we can participate with you and show our products? Yes, thank you so much. So um, you mean actually the project, right? We can just explore together and uh, actually I uh, got many projects. Maybe it's really the for the uh, human robot interaction and also mm -hmm. for the student uh, education, uh, maybe for the Chinese student or, or the uh, UK student actually, especially for the uh, maybe undergraduate student or some like a early career. So uh, I will explore this kind of like a maybe opportunity and I can just um, use for the, the elephant robot to do this kind of thing. I will contact you. So keep in touch. So thank you so much. Thanks to Jia Ji Yang, Shu Yang Hu, and Jia Ying Bai from Eureka Robotics Center of Cardiff Metropolitan University for joining this interview and for sharing the feedback on the challenges they encountered while using my body. In fact, we have comprehensive test-based tutorials available and we continuously update these materials. You can visit our official website, click on the My Body product page and find the Gipper entry in the top right corner of the navigation bar. Once on the Gipper page, you can open the corresponding chapters based on your needs. Actually, for each robot, the tutorials can be found by clicking the Gipper button on the corresponding product's detail page. In addition to test-based tutorials, we also offer video tutorials. You can search for Elephant Robotics on YouTube and visit our channel. Scroll down on our homepage to find the tutorials and educational robots playlists. And then you can view the relevant video tutorials according to your needs. Besides, we actually have a dedicated support section in our official website. Just visit our official website and click on the support section in the navigation bar. In the product support center section, you can find the corresponding GIP links by clicking on each robot. You can also view the tutorial videos, KOL review videos, user cases, technical cases, as well as related software or development libraries and other relevant materials. If you want to download related softwares, you can find the corresponding Windows, Linux, or Mac versions by checking the downloads section. Besides, if you want to see what creative projects that others have done with our robots, you can click on the Project House section to have a look. Of course, we also welcome you to upload and share your own creative projects with us. Additionally, in May last year, we launched an integrated comprehensive robotics education solution. It caters to diverse academic needs and includes a range of software courses. The solution encompasses fundamental courses, tool training courses, and practice and application courses covering topics such as robotics, mobile robots, machine vision, and human-computer interaction. Therefore, this solution could enhance teaching efficiency, promote student engagement, flexibility, and initiative. That's all for this interview. If you like it, please give us a thumbs up and share it to your friends. We will see you in next video.